I'd like to talk with you very briefly about different types of numbers, yeah, because you will encounter them uh, throughout the years, um, and it's important you know which numbers belong where. And we have four categories, if you like. We have natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers. Natural numbers are those numbers that come naturally to us, if you like. Yeah, if a child goes to school and learns how to count, it will say or oh, one. Two, three, four, five, yeah, and go on and on and on. So those are what we call the natural numbers, yeah. The address you live at, perhaps um, the house number is 32, yeah, or it's going to be 145, yeah. Those are all examples of natural numbers. We include zero there, so it will be zero, a one, a two, a three, a four, and you can continue. So positive whole numbers. Now, integers, it's almost the same, but it includes the negative numbers. Yeah, so for instance, in Holland, it can get quite cold during the winter. It can be minus four degrees, yeah, or minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and you can go on and on and on on both sides. Those are integers, yeah, so negative and positive whole numbers. Yeah, we include the zero there in the middle. Now we have rational and irrational numbers left. And rational numbers are those numbers uh, which you can write as a fraction. Okay, so I want to give you a few examples. For instance, the number seven. It's a rational number because I could write that as a fraction, seven over one. Yeah, but also the number two, three over four is an example of a rational number because that could be written as 11 over 4. So as long as you can write it as a fraction, yeah, where the denominator is not zero by the way, then we are talking about a rational number. So also terminating decimals, 0 0.5 for instance, are rational numbers. Yeah? 1.59 is a rational number. 159 over 100. Or you could say, um, for instance, 0 0.3 with a little dot on top, so it says 0 0.3333333, which is a recurring decimal, is also rational because that can be written as 1 over 3. So as long as you can write it as a fraction, yeah, so you have a terminating decimal, or you have a recurring decimal, we are talking about rational numbers. Now, irrational numbers is the other way around. If you cannot Right, if it's not a terminating decimal or um, yeah, if there's not a pattern, then it's an irrational number. Yeah, you cannot write it as a fraction. For instance, if you type in your calculator the square root of 2, it's going to give you something like 1.4142135, and depending on your calculator, yeah, but it goes on and on and on and on, all those decimals. There's no pattern, nothing reoccurs, it's not terminating. I cannot capture this exactly in a fraction. That's why we call that an irrational number. Yeah, but a very famous other irrational number is, for instance, pi, yeah, which shows the relationship between the diameter of a circle and its circumference. Yeah, in your calculator, 3.14, and it's followed with an infinite amount of decimals, actually, because we still don't know exactly what pi is, yeah? But anyway, we can't capture that in a fraction, yeah? We can get quite close to it, but we can't capture it in one fraction, okay? So that's why it's an irrational number. And sometimes people refer to uh, real numbers, and real numbers are rational and irrational numbers together. Those are the real numbers. But anyway, natural numbers, integers, rational numbers, and irrational numbers.